Everyone's a winner on today's Mags on Media as we take a look at how a beer brand dominated the 2018 FIFA World Cup on the digital playing field, while a local campaign won us over through some innovative thinking on the playground. Gauteng's biggest independent radio station hits the jackpot with its latest content offering and why a well-known luxury car brand is making a big effort to create ad campaigns that tap into current events and cultural nuance. So with the 2018 FIFA Soccer World Cup officially over, it's been revealed that a beer brand, Budweiser's digital strategy, made it the most talked about brand during the tournament. We want to know why. Now, we know that sports sponsorship of this magnitude is a big numbers game. But we've also learned over the years that it's no longer enough to simply stick your logo on a stadium, hold thumbs and hope for the best. With innovative and disruptive ideas, Budweiser managed to find that all-important human connection with football fans the world over. And here to tell us more about the strategy and outcomes is Sviso Pule, who is the digital manager for the Africa Zone at AB InBev. I was just saying to you a little earlier, Sviso, and welcome, that your job didn't actually exist five years ago. That's very true. That's something else to talk about. Before we get to the digital strategy side of things, I want to know why this tournament is such a good fit for the brand that you represent. I think the association has been about a quarter of a century. It has been 32 World Cups uh, that Budweiser has been involved in. Um, and the reason why Budweiser chose the World Cup to just partner with, it's the biggest party on earth and it comes along every four years. And so with South Africa and Nigeria, having Budweiser for the very first time in this tournament, a bigger party was had. And so that's why the conversations ensued online. Why do you need to think beyond the point that I made in the introduction about mm. simply sticking your logo on the stadium or on the corner of a television set and saying, well, job is done. I mean, in 10 years, the whole paradigm has shifted, hasn't it? No, it certainly has, mm. Jeremy. I mean, media is no longer passively consumed. You know, as, as, as viewers, we also contribute to the conversation and in opinions that we give. And Advertising also follows the same line because people are consuming their passion points, in this case it was football, and they're also talking about their favorite players, what their opinions of the referee's decisions are. And so the brand also needs to have a narrative and has to have a, an opinion and engage the consumers in their second screening behavior. How do you craft the narrative or the opinion to stay true to the tournament itself, mm -hmm. but also to make sure that your brand isn't overreaching? So with Budweiser, we focus primarily on the light up moment. So the premise of the campaign was light up the World Cup. And what that means is that we looked for moments that actually just brought about sheer celebration and sheer just eruptions of joy and just partying Such at the as World what? Cup. Give me an example. So for example, where you a, might have focused. a goal, that brilliant moment that led to that ultimate goal. And also just doing the impossible, Russia beating Spain. I mean, I happened to have been in Moscow and actually being at the game. It was oh, just electric. salt into the wound, <laughs> yes. It was electric. And that was such a key yeah. moment. Uh, the following match after that, which was Russia, Croatia. The abbreviations is RUS. CRO, and we had Russell Crowe, that acronym, even Russell Crowe himself got involved in the conversation, just to prove your point. That so uh, what I want to know now is, let's focus on a goal. Yeah. Okay, so that is that is one of those moments that lights people's lives up, particularly the home fans. Yes. What then digitally do you do in order to migrate that into the space where you will seed and sustain the conversation? The technicality or the logistics behind it? What are you doing? It was a massive collective effort, uh, which began just months before the tournament, as you would imagine. And it's a multi-stakeholder arrangement where we prepared for war rooms. And so what that means, as you would imagine in those war movies, is that you had strategy, you had all the technical and insights team being on present. Mm -hmm. And we, in our case, we had design team. We also had the uh, social commentary around the games in terms of stats that the sports channels would not have. So all of that preparation went into preparing for the conversation that would take place. So, we so the moment something happens, which is going to light up the tournament, that war room springs into we were ready. Yeah, what do you do? We were ready with the conversation, with an angle that's in, in tandem with the, with the positioning of the brand. And so that's how it was so authentic, because you have to post and create content as it happens. How do you determine the angle? 
as I said, with preparation. So you anticipate like various angles. So it's it's, it's content narratives that you. Oh, so there's anticipate. a template of angles. There's a template Sorry, I wasn't of angles. You're a template of angles. And yep. any eventuality, we yep. would be ready with this, and you just uh, customize and design and, and upload hit send. and hit send and then what and happens? amplify because and you have to put paid support behind every social media post. It's no good these days that you put a post out and you anticipate that people will, would watch. You have to bring it to them, and that's how we actually dominated the conversation. And is this what you mean by using the interactive tools at your disposal? We have to. We have to be yeah. very much part of the game. Uh, we are very much part of the game, minute by minute, um, even to the referee's uh, final whistle. What about the above the line stuff, though? I mean, so, all of this started, particularly with the light up the FIFA World Cup campaign. I think that started in. Uh, when it was around May, yes. May, it ran yes, about and, uh, May. Yes, and even if yeah. you go well, way back in December. Would, would that have initially up. seeded the digital conversation and could you have done the digital component without having a great big thundering ad to set the scene? You raise a great point, uh, Jeremy, in that uh, you know this is uh, in many ways an integrated marketing campaign and that's how true, cam true successful campaigns uh, uh, um, will stand out in that you got the awareness piece that just announces who you are, what you are. In this case, the light up the World Cup, which kicked off in May. And then that awareness and being present on TV made us authentically relevant in engaging on the soccer tournament. People need to know that we are involved in the World Cup and therefore we are the official beer of the World Cup and what it means for us to be part of that light up the world campaign. And so socially, we drove that conversation, you, leveraging that awareness that we have on TV. And how do you measure your success? Did you set targets? We had set targets. So being the first time uh, being involved in the World Cup uh, from an Africa zone point of view, as I mentioned, Nigeria and South Africa. South Africa, even less of uh, an advantage, we had did not have a national team participating in the World Cup, as you would know. But you know, conversations are driven in country mainly by the passion and the interest in the mm. national soccer team. So we had to make sure that we had legitimate reasons to engage and we drove that conversation around those light up moments and just bringing that World Cup experience Did to South Africa. Did you meet those targets? We met those targets. We, in fact, exceeded those targets. So we beat the global benchmarks as an Africa zone, which is unbelievable. And secondly, from a global point of view, Budweiser dominated the conversation, which is the reason why we're having this conversation. Right, final question, that without repeating the fact that yeah. you went to Russia to watch the World Cup, sure. you've made that very clear to me, and I'm very envious. What was your favorite light up moment? My favorite light up moment was when Africa won the World Cup. So, you know, you ask me why, maybe, uh, is uh, that you look at uh, the Africa diaspora that's represented in the, Africa, the French national team. Um, it was very much a success of and testament yeah. of African talent. So that is my favorite light of moment. And, you know, if I can indulge here, is uh, the Africa zone dominating the conversation um, on the World Cup for Budweiser. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks so much, really Jeremy. Really appreciate it. Sviso Pule, digital manager for the Africa Zone, as he's just been saying uh, to AB InBev, thank you very much uh, for joining us. So while Budweiser was dominating the digital space, a local advertising campaign winning our hearts. The washing powder brand Omo has been doing some sterling and groundbreaking creative work alongside the agency Ogilvy Cape Town, this time through a clever little stunt, as you're about to see, involving a storybook activated by dirt. On the way our children behave and interact. We are losing our children to technology. So how do we restore balance and get them playing outside again when dirt is frowned upon by parents and disliked by kids? We created a book, but this was no ordinary book. We developed a new ink formula to create a multi-sensory experience, a story that could only be revealed with dirt. We went to schools and turned the outdoors into a classroom where kids discovered firsthand that dirt is good. Omo presents the world's first dirt-activated book. Are you ready to get dirty? Yeah! When dirt was rubbed on the pages, our new African fable about unity was revealed. The tale of spots and stripes. The tale of spots and stripes was brought to life by renowned local artist Karabo Poppy and was designed to promote child development through tactile and fine motor skills, visual perception, language development and education. Moments later, they heard the mothers roar. Never judge another by the way they look. I really 
love how this multi-century book reconnects kids with nature in the most innovative and wholesome way. It's a wonderful resource, it's extraordinary, and it's going to change children's lives. So we would endorse it 100%. The books have been sent to various schools nationwide, and we are currently engaging the Department of Education to get this learning tool into the national curriculum so that kids everywhere can discover that dirt is good. Next on the program, how a luxury car brand is tapping into cultural nuances in their advertising campaigns, not just in South Africa, but in territories around the world. South Africa's first choice for news. This is ENCA.